Hey, Larry. Yeah. Do you know why we celebrate April Fool's Day? Oh, uh, why? Oh, hi, well, Millie. Because of Millie. Oh, are you serious? Because she's a real fool. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, people celebrate Silly April Millie. Fool's Day because a long time ago, the first day of the year was April 1. And then, um, I think it was Charlemagne, uh, decreed that the first day of the year is going to be January 1. And some people were kind of stubborn and said, no, we're still going to celebrate April 1. And so they did. But since most of the world was celebrating January 1, they thought they looked kind of foolish. So they called them fools. And April Fool's Day was born. And ever since, people have been playing practical jokes on each other on April Fool's Day in memory of that. So just like you guys played a practical joke on me with telling our story this week, I thought we could come up with a couple crafts that reflected that. And so I came up with a fun April Fool's Day craft and then a couple of crafts that went along with our book, too. So would you like to see what I've done? Yeah, really sure. Okay, well, you like this first one because it has to do with food. Oh. So I thought it'd be kind of fun is if the kids could create little seed packets. And so we're going to give everybody a template of seed packets that they can decorate. And then we gave them cereal bags to show them the different types of um, seeds they could grow. For example... Like the donut seeds are a bag of Cheerios. Ooh. And the bread seeds is a bag of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And the pool noodle seeds is a bag of Fruit Loops. And the cookie seeds are, of course, a bag of Chips Ahoy cookie cereal. Very, very Millie, interesting. you're being naughty. Yeah, she's got something. Oh. She just really wants to play April Fool's Day, too. I know. Okay, so to do that craft, if you stop into the Herb Memorial Library, all you have to do is pick up um, our little craft bags, and inside of them we have these templates that the kids can color, and then they can decorate with stickers, and they can cut them out just like I did with this one. And then it's really, really simple. Once you've colored and cut it out, you just have to take some glue here, and just, and I actually recommend that you kind of fold the edges first here along the dark lines, just like this. And then one more time, you're going to want to fold it and just run some glue here and some glue here. And then we're going to want to pull this over the top like that and crease it shut. And that gives you your seed packet. And then when it's nice and dry, I want to make sure it's really good. And when it's nice and dry, then you can take your bag of cookies or your cereal here. We're going to set this over here with something hard on it so that it stays. And then you can take your bag of cereal here. You can take out your slip. And you can throw some cookie seeds in here, like so. And you can try a few if you're hungry. And then you can give them to somebody and say, look, we gave you some seeds. And maybe they would like to have seeds for their April Fool's Day. Thank and you. And tell them to plant them in a bowl with lots of milk. I will love seeds. Oh, Millie. She didn't do stuff. She's, she's eating the leftover cereal on the floor, Larry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> silly me. So I, I don't think we'll be eating that that box of Cheerios mm. anytime soon. Mm, quick, quick <laughs> seeds. Quite quite a naughty doggy. Mm. We'll have to move the boxes of cereal. Um. Sorry, everybody. Silly Millie. Okay, so that's kind of fun, Larry. Do you like them? Yeah. Are they good? Crunch, crunch, yeah. crunch, crunch, crunch. Okay, so and if you don't want to, if you don't want to make cookie seeds to give it to somebody, you can make pool noodle seeds, or you could make loaves of bread seeds, or you can make donut seeds. Bread seeds. Now, if you can't, I know, isn't that kind of silly? Is that wheat? That would be wheat. That's right. So if you can't make it into the Herb Memorial Library, but you still want to do this fun craft, if you go online and you Google um, the seed packets. I'll show you the template again. The seed packets under scholastic books for preschoolers. It'll take you to a website that you can print this template off 
for free. And then you can go ahead and do that with what you have at home. If you come to the library though, we provided you with the templates and the cereals. So that will save you that trip. Ooh. Now, since I really enjoyed um, their practical joke that you guys did, and this is one of my favorite books. Um, the P is for pterodactyl. It took me a long time to pronounce pterodactyl because I always thought the P was was actually uh, a sound that you heard, so it would be pterodactyl, but we all know that that's not correct. I thought it'd be kind of fun if we made pterodactyls, and I found some really fun uh, marionette-like puppets also online that you can make um, by coming down to the Herman Memorial Library. And they can kind of fly and you can move them around. And the original template I found made them really, really small. They're not very big this way. And I thought that might be kind of hard for little fingers to be cutting out. So we went ahead and we enlarged it. So if you come down to the Herman Memorial Library, you will get a template that looks like this. And you will get a craft stick and some string. And so all you need to provide then is the scissors and, um, and the ability to cut them out. And so what we recommend that you do then is when you take this, oh, and if you can't come down to the library, again, you can go to thecrafttrain.com. This is a template that is not the large size, but the small size template is at thecrafttrain.com. And you can print that off online there too. We recommend that you print it off on hard cardstock um, so that your pterodactyl lasts longer. And what you're going to do with this template is you're going to want to fold it in half along that dotted line. And because it's cardstock, um, having a parent or caregiver do this part, you want to use a ruler and a butter knife. And you just want to gently score that dotted line. Just want to run it along a couple times because that makes folding the paper really really easy and it'll fold right on that line nice and firm and then all you have to do is take your scissors and cut out along the line here and maybe you'll have to help um, young kids with getting in between the fingers and the toes and then you want to cut out this long oval piece um, that kind of looks a little bit like um, a, a giant tongue it's actually going to be part of his mouth and you want to make sure that you cut that line also so that when it's all cut out, what you have is this guy and this piece. And we folded this piece along the dotted line also because this piece is going to be inserted into that slot there. You just kind of want to slide it in like so. And that forms his crest and his mouth. And so now he's looking a lot like a pterodactyl. But how do we get him to fly? Well, that's what you need the string for. And on the pattern, there were two holes along his back. And again, the parent or caregiver is going to want to flip him over and puncture just a couple little holes in there. And then you want to take the string that we've provided. And from the underside, you want to weave it through the hole. And um, kite string sometimes has a mind of its own. So if it's been a little fussy, just get it wet or use a piece of tape and you should be able to get it through the holes there. And then once you get it through the holes, like that, carefully don't unravel it all, um, then you just want to take your popsicle stick and you just want to tie it or tape it to the top of your popsicle stick. And we'll just use tape here now. And just tape it to the top of your popsicle stick so that it adheres nicely to it. And then you're going to want to flip it back over again and take the underside here. And again, sometimes it's going to be a little difficult to get it through there. Um, and it's kind of already unraveled a little bit, so you might need to twist it. Actually, we'll put a little piece of tape on there to make it go through nicely. And it's a little trick you can get for when you've got yarn or string that's unraveling. Just use tape on the end and twist it tight. And then it doesn't unravel as it goes through. And then you can just kind of grab it through on the other side. And then there it is. Oh, not quite. It fell back out. 
So this would be really good for eye hand coordination for little kids. I'm actually going to trim that now because it's gotten too frayed. And then they can um, get it through. Okay, so there it is. Now we come through, and again, we're just going to come up here to our, our um, craft stick, and we're going to kind of hang it up and measure him in the air so we can see if he's even, if we need to make him taller or shorter or however we want him to be. And then you just want to take a piece of tape and secure that right where it's at. And you can trim off the excess string, but now you can fly your pterodactyl all over the place. And I can't make a very good pterodactyl. Can you make a good pterodactyl, Larry? Um, probably not. Probably not? Okay, well. So that's your pterodactyl puppet. So he's kind of fun to make. But what I thought would be a really fun and easy craft for our younger kids to watch, to make is our cute little A is for alligator. Isn't that cute, Larry? Yeah. Munch, munch, munch. Crunch, crunch, crunch. And it's even the letter Q. I mean A. Thank you, Larry. The letter A. Absolutely. Agree. Very good. So again, if you come on down to the library, to the Herman Memorial Library in Midland, Pennsylvania, we have all kinds of goodies to make this craft as well. You'll get a complete kit here, and the kit comes with orange construction paper, green green paper, white paper, um, black paper, even a print-off A is for alligator, so we can put this whole thing together. And the first thing you're going to want to do is take your letter A template. And you're going to want to cut it completely out with your scissors. And then when you get it all cut out, we want you to set that aside. And then we want you to take your green paper. You're going to get a green sheet of paper in your kit. And this is just green colored paper. And we want you to cut it into strips. Strips that are small enough for kids to be able to tear. So just, you know, by an inch or so, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then have the kids start tearing this into bits. This is really good um, fine motor skill coordination um, practice and training for little fingers, getting them strong to hold pencils and pens. And you just want them to shred lots and lots of this paper. It's going to take um, about mm, maybe four inches by about eight inches of paper to shred to completely cover the entire A. So it can be kind of time consuming. So have them do that. And then maybe you want to take a break from the craft and then come back to it. And once you get all your pieces cut out uh, or torn up, you need to glue them onto your letter A. I recommend a glue stick so you can work in small sections. Um, and because regular glue will wrinkle the paper. But if you're in a hurry, just go ahead and use your glue or don't have a glue stick. You can use the, the all-purpose glue that works too. And you want to glue all your green onto your paper onto your orange paper so that it looks like a giant green letter A. And now you have the body of your alligator done. The next thing you're gonna need to do is take your white paper now and you wanna trim off a piece of white paper about an inch wide by about eight inches long. And from here, your children can practice cutting out triangles. And these are just going to be a series of angles that you're cutting back and forth and they don't have to be uniform or perfect or even, you know, isosceles or right or acute triangles. You just want to cut off a bunch of these because these are going to become the teeth. And here again too, we're going to go ahead and I have some pre-cut triangles here. You're going to put some glue right along the edge here. And right along the edge on the bottom. And then just put your teeth on. And you can make him have as sharp as teeth or as dull a teeth as you want for your alligator. Put them as big or as close or as far apart as you like. Um, be as creative as you want. Millie wants to be an alligator, Larry. I think she's trying to get your attention. Oh, yes. She's shaking the camera. She's shaking the camera. Millie. Did you want to make an alligator too, or do you just want more Cheerios? Yeah, probably both. I think she wants more Cheerios. She has a thing for Cheerios, and I put the, the Cheerios up on the table. Oh, I know. Dogs don't eat Cheerios, Millie. I'm silly, Millie. I know. In fact, I don't think Larry eats Cheerios all that often. Do you, Larry? Uh, I, 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 oh, there goes Millie again. No, I prefer um, 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 Captain Crunch. 
Yeah, really. That's yes. not a very healthy cereal, Larry. But it's good. I, I'm sure it is. Oh, really? But maybe you want to stick to some healthier breakfast choices. Larry. Okay. I also like toast. Oh, that's always good. And in the morning. Now, for the inside of the teeth here, you, need, you want to make your triangles a little bit smaller than what we've made them here. So we'll cut off a few of these here just to give you an idea as to what they should look like. So again, you can just take the triangles that you've cut and make them smaller. Hello, Millie. I think Millie's hoping she'll get an Academy Award for her best performance. Maybe. Yeah. She should try harder. Uh, all right, so we can put some teeth in the middle here too, see? Just like this. And this is one alligator that doesn't need to go to the orthodontist because his teeth look pretty sharp. And white. And white. Yeah, he brushes his teeth every no day. No cavities there. No cavities there. Okay, then in the craft kit, we also supplied everybody with eyes. So you want to glue the whites of the eyes to the top of the A, just like this. And again, since they're your eyes, you can make them as googly or as silly or as close together as you like. Maybe you want them a little bit closer together. And then we gave a little square of black paper. And from this, you're just going to cut a little circle for this, the pupil of the eyes. And this would be good practice for the kids learning how to cut circles. They don't have to be perfect. Um, they just, you know, can try it. You can also trace it with a white crayon if your kiddos need to have something to trace or something to, to give them a guideline. And then just put glue on the eyes so that we can put the pupils on there too. Just like that. And take out the excess. And you can throw your scraps away. And then, uh, last but not least, we're going to go ahead and put our A's for alligator on here. And we put them right across the top. So you just got to put a diagonal piece of glue here. And then put our A's for alligator across the top. And then I also went ahead on my sample one and I took a black marker and I just gave them eyebrows. I think Millie found her ball. Millie found her ball. She did. Okay, and that's how you make A's for alligator. Isn't that a fun and simple craft to do? Yes. It is. So between the pterodactyls and the silly seed packages and the A's for alligator, there's all kinds of fun crafts to do to celebrate this fun April Fool's Day. We hope that you all enjoyed our crafts tonight. We'll talk to you again next week. See you. Bye.